Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know that I've been doing honestly just all trying new makeup videos back to back, but the products are not stopping. I feel like this may be my last trying new makeup before I can get into like a roundup, giving you my full review. And then of course my favorites, I haven't done a favorites in quite a while. So I wanna do one last trying new makeup. Watch, I'll say this and then 20 other things drop, but I do have quite a few new products that some of them aren't even available yet that I have here. So I'm gonna be doing a trying new makeup, playing around with some new stuff as usual, and then we will do some roundups and all of that stuff, but I didn't even know whether to film this. I thought you guys may be just like honestly burnt out from the trying new, but then you guys are always asking my thoughts on stuff, so I'm like, no, I think they'd still wanna see this. So I will link everything that I use today down below in my description box. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe, and if you enjoy trying new makeup videos, give this video a thumbs up, and let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so I've got you zoomed in. I've got the hair out of my face. I actually wanna try a product that I just picked up from Ulta. So this is from Sachet Beauty. This is an influencer-owned brand, and this is the Lip Liner Tattoo. So essentially, it's one of those that you apply, and then you wait for it to dry, and then you peel it off. I got the color P inked, so this one is a little bit more of a pink tone. So basically, it's supposed to be almost just like a tattoo or stain for the day. So what people do with this usually is just line their lips, which is what I'm going to try. I'm a little nervous because I did film a little short form content with this and just trying to get it to peel was quite the task. So it has a doe foot applicator but it's very long and thin so I'm just going to line my lips. I can't talk while I do this. Why am I so nervous? So it goes on pretty dark. Okay, so once I have it on, it starts to get like tight and dry down. So I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute. I don't know if I can take myself seriously, but I do want to demo and give you my thoughts on this Ula Henriksen Banana Bright Vitamin C Stick. I feel like I can't take myself seriously, but I'm trying to, you know, multitask here. So I got the shade Banana, and this, I had high hopes for it. When you swatch it and when the models apply it on Sephora, it looked like it was really going to give like a light coverage, but a nice hydration and brightness help kind of color correct darkness. I just don't think once you blend it out that it really does much, but I wanna demo it anyways. So I'm just going to apply right under my eyes. It doesn't tug too bad, like once you warm it up. This is a look, you know? We're moving into jaundice territory, so that's always fun. So I'm just going to Blend this out, and this is the lightest color. So this is what it looks like blended out. I just don't really feel like it does much. It has a little bit of a greasy feel, but it's not thick. I just don't really feel like it's needed, especially for the price. I would much rather reach for like my Becca under eye brightener corrector. Even hydration wise, I don't really feel like my under eyes are insanely hydrated. They do feel like they have something on them. It definitely gives a little bit of brightness, you know, all the way under my eye, but where I really need it, I just feel like I would have liked more coverage on this product. So I just wish I wouldn't have bought this, to be honest. I was hoping for more, and I just think for the price point, it's not something that I feel like does enough to add into my daily routine. Okay, so it's been a few minutes, so I wanna go ahead and try to peel this off. I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to stain and I feel like I just couldn't get a hold of it. Like that was the hardest part is that it just, oh, okay, ooh. That made my eyes water. I feel like a little bit of the peach fuzz on my Cupid's bow when I pulled it, it was a little bit painful. Definitely removing better on my lip than it did when I swatched it. But it's definitely not like in a one pull motion. So I went ahead and zoomed you in so you could really see what kind of look this gives. 
Obviously, I am red around my mouth. Because I couldn't get it to all peel off, I just took a little bit of a baby wipe and it did remove that sticky part, but it did leave a stain. It definitely stains. Like my fingers are stained, so be careful. I feel like I look like I just have dirt around my mouth. I don't know. I think it's just because I'm red. So we will see as my face calms down. But I do think that it did stain. It's just one of those products that is a little bit finicky to kind of pull off in one go. So I would maybe try to apply it thicker so you can like grab a hold of it. But I am curious how long this will last. I don't know. It might be something cool. I've seen people use it like on their eyes as like liner. But basically just to give you like a permanent makeup sort of effect, but that just lasts for like a day. And since I wiped off most of my lip stain, I am going to go in with the Stila Lip Stain Pen in the shade Yuri. I showed this in a previous video. It has a really interesting applicator, so you can do like a lip line or you can fill in. I just wish this shade wasn't as like dark, but I might go back and get another color. This shade is just a little bit of a deeper pink, but it is a standard lip marker. So I'm glad to see Stila actually like coming out with something because they just haven't in so long. And then I wanted to go in with this NYX Fat Oil Lip Drip. So this was available I think in Canada first and then it became available recently in the US. I did pick this up a while ago, but I haven't demoed it. So I got the color News Feed. These are supposed to be pretty pigmented. I feel like I've used this once, but I can't remember. Okay, it smells really yummy. And this is the color I got. I wanted to get one that had a lot of pigment. I can't really remember how I feel about how it applied. So I just want to apply it and then kind of give you my thoughts. It has a really large doe foot. Feels comfortable. I would say maybe like the Clarins lip oil, but I would say maybe a little bit thicker. Not in like a sticky kind of way, but just kind of coat your lips a little bit heavier. But it definitely feels comfortable on the lips. I would say it definitely has a good pigment to it, which I personally like. I do think the shade is a little deep, but I did add a bunch of products just to test them out. But I do think this is a good option, especially for the drugstore. Okay, moving on to eyes. I'm gonna be using the new Lawless The One Lavender Eyeshadow Palette. So this is an eight pan palette. It's very, very subdued. When I was swatching these, I noticed that it just seems more like a wash of color. So I don't think this is going to be something that is gonna give you like intense depth or smoky eye. I also noticed that the shimmers are different. We have two here that swatch like a standard shimmer which lawless doesn't have like crazy intense metallics but then this shade right here can be a little bit more powdery because it has like that reflect so I just want to play around and create a look I'm gonna go in and just smooth out my base I didn't set my base because these colors are pretty light I wanted to make sure that I gave it you know something to adhere to so to start out this look I am gonna go in to the lavender matte shade I don't have too much experience with Lawless shadows, so I'm curious how this will blend. Definitely showing up a lot better with no powder down. So I wanted to tell you guys that I have started watching, or Ian and I started watching The Last of Us. If you have not watched that show, you guys, thank you for the recommendation. I was... I don't know, reluctant to watch it. I thought it was a little bit more like sci-fi and I typically don't really like things that are like sci-fi-ish, but I think that show is just absolutely incredible. It is dark, you know, it really makes you think, but it also hits on just human emotions and love and just issues that are going on honestly in our world today. So really, really a great show. We have been binging it. I think we're on like episode seven and we started watching it a couple days ago. So it's probably one of our favorite shows we've watched in a while. So if you haven't watched it, highly recommend checking it out. I think it's on HBO. So next I'm gonna jump into this like periwinkle color with a new brush and I wanna blend right above that purple. 
So I'm just blending around the edges. I feel like I'm moving into Mimi territory again as I do quite often on this channel. The lips with the eyes are just a look here. Let's hope we can pull this together. And then just to try, I'm gonna take this shade right here with a clean brush and soften the edges. So next I'm gonna dip into the deep shade and I'm just gonna use the first brush just to add a little bit of dimension, but again, I just don't know if you're gonna get much. I would say use a tacky base, put your deep shades down first if you really want some depth. Okay, and for the lid, I'm gonna go into this shade down here. The one that's iridescent is pretty flaky, and the other one's a little bit deeper. So the Lawless Metallics are not the most metallic. I would say they're more like a satin, probably. So once I've laid it down, I'm just going in to get more of like a shape. And I did just wet my brush because I wanna see if that makes a difference. I really don't know. I feel like this is a formula that your fingers probably best. And then once I have that applied, I'm just gonna jump back into that purple, just blend around it. And then again with that blue shade, I feel like I have a Winnie hair on my mouth right now, so that's fun. I probably have for this entire video. Yep, fabulous. So I'm just blending up and around. And then just lastly, back into the deep shade, just to blend the outer edge. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave the eyes there. I'm gonna go off camera and do my liner and lashes, and then we will jump back in and do complexion. Okay, so liner and lashes are on. I use the BK Beauty and Risa Does Makeup in the style stiletto, but I wanna go in next with this primer. So I actually got this like a week ago, and I hadn't heard anyone announce it, so I just didn't say anything because I figured that it just arrived early. This was actually my first PR package from One Size, and this is their Secure the Sweat Dry Till Dawn Primer. So this is supposed to be good for pores with a matte finish, best for oily combo or normal skin. And it says that it's a sweat-proof, waterproof, aluminum-free primer that absorbs sweat and oil to tighten pores, mattify skin, and prolong makeup wear. Squeeze a dime-sized drop onto fingertips, warm it up, and press into skin before makeup. Wait one minute for formula to dry before going in with makeup. So because I'm testing this out, I don't want to use a foundation that I'm not familiar with. So I'm gonna be mixing my L'Oreal Infallible with my Armani Luminous Silk, which is sort of like a glowy version for my skin. And I wanna see what this does. So when you open it up, it has like a little pin. Why am I zoomed so far out? Let me zoom you in. It has like a little pin and it does come in that, I guess like toothpaste sort of packaging. So the texture of it is definitely a gel texture, but I'm going to squeeze out a dime size amount. I'm going to warm it up and then I'm going to press it into my skin, just like they say. It has, I don't know, what kind of scent is that? It doesn't, I don't know if it's an added scent or if it's just an ingredient because it doesn't smell like they added a fragrance. So it feels nice and cool on the face. I'm just going to focus it where I do get oily. Okay, so I'm noticing a little bit of pilling, which could be my fault just because I may have used too much or rubbed it in too much. So I'm just going to try to remove the pilling and then just let this sit for a minute. That's what it says in the how to use. I don't know if this is doing anything for my pores as of right now, but we'll have to see when we apply foundation. But in terms of how it feels, it feels like it's set down to like a soft mat, but I can definitely see pilling on my fingertips. So it's one of those that I feel like less maneuvering is more. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start applying my foundation. I just have a mix of the 
Armani Luminous Silk with my L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear. Shades look a little deep, but... Okay, so my foundation is on. I feel like it's a little bit deep, but we will make it work. So now I wanna go in with this brand new product. It's not even available yet. This is the Huda Beauty Glowish Bright Light Sheer Concealer. Effortlessly melts into the skin, packed with skin-loving ingredients. It illuminates, hydrates, and rejuvenates the under eyes. No makeup makeup has never looked this natural. So probably it's not gonna be the best with what we have going on, but it is the newest concealer to try. So they sent over a few shades. The darkest shade they sent was actually Fair. It comes in a little tube packaging, and then it has a doe foot. This is a pretty light color, but we're just gonna try it out and see what we think. Okay, so the texture is really cooling. I almost wonder if it has like a cooling ingredient in there and it's very thin. And I would say very radiant, which doesn't surprise me because the glowish tinted moisturizer was extremely radiant. So I expected this to be pretty glowy. Coverage is definitely, I would say light. It does have enough coverage if you just want like a natural look. So it has a nice luminosity to it, but I do agree that this would be like a no makeup makeup sort of product. I do feel like my under eyes are tingling a little bit, which is a little interesting. I don't know if there's some sort of ingredient for cooling in here. It did say packed with skincare ingredients, but I really don't want to build it up because I just don't think that it's going to, you know, get more coverage. It's just gonna look heavier. So I'm gonna go in next. I'm trying to decide. Since I'm still testing quite a few concealers, I'm gonna grab this Givenchy Prisme Libre Skin Caring Concealer. I have the color N120. This is a huge component. I reviewed this or demoed it in a previous video, but I'm still getting my thoughts on it. It is, I would say, like a light medium coverage, very thin. And I'm just gonna go back in with my foundation brush, just around the edges. I am obsessed with these brushes from BK Beauty, the 109s. You can use them for concealer, foundation, any cream products. I mean, I think I like this more than the original. It's just so useful in so many different areas. All right, so this is what the under eyes are looking like. I know I layered two concealers, so I think it looks pretty nice, but I wanna go ahead and set my face and then we will jump into some new blushes. All right, face is set and I did apply a bronzer. I didn't have a new one, so I will just link below what I used. But I wanna go in with these Half Magic Beauty cheek fluffs. So I've had these for a while. I feel like so much stuff was launching that I just sort of forgot about these, but I've tried them since and they are beautiful. So they come in this recyclable packaging and then you can depot them, which I would say definitely just because, I mean, this isn't, you know, the most practical for keeping. Starting off with the lightest color, which is called Pink Mushroom. You can see the glow that it has. So on the hand, it's pretty neutral, but it gives you a nice glow. And then the one I just showed you, which is called Don't Be a Doll. This one is sort of in the middle, like a peachy pink shade. And then the more vibrant one is called Something Frustration. I don't even wanna say the name because I got actually limited monetization. I got flagged for one of my recent videos, um, which has never happened to me and I've been on YouTube for how long? Uh, because a product name cursed. So I'm just trying to be more mindful so these are the three shades. So you can see that the light one definitely has more of a glow to it. I am gonna start off with the Don't Be a Doll, which is kind of that middle shade. And then I think I'm gonna use the brush they sent over as well. It's this like really cute, dense brush. So it is sort of a putty. If you can see like it grabs in certain areas. So I'm just gonna kind of blend on my hand 
and then go in. So this is a formula that I feel like you kind of have to build up. It's not one that you have to be afraid of. So you can see it has a glow to it, but it's not overly shimmery where you feel like, wow, like it's a highlighter. So here is the shade Don't Be a Doll. I wanna go in with the lightest color called Pink Mushroom. This one has more of a luminosity to it, but I just wanna show you. So I'm gonna put this a little bit more on top, kind of like a highlighter, sort of, just because this one is definitely more shimmery. Can you see that? And then of course, just to demo the brighter shade, I am gonna try this one out. So this one is definitely the most punchy, but they have some really, really deep colors. I don't think they're as scary on the face just because the formula isn't overly crazy pigmented. All right, next, before we finish the eyes, I'm gonna go in with this powder that I've been loving from Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is the Brightening Light Press Powder. So she came out with palettes in the past, but then she released these in singles, and I've been really liking this to just sort of bake with. So I'm just going to take this, and I wanna put it under where I bronzed. My foundation was just a little too dark. So I'm just gonna let that bake while we finish the eyes and I wanna go back in to the Lawless palette. Trying to decide what I wanna do on the lower lash line. I think I'm gonna go in with the deepest shade and just smoke this maybe like halfway in. I usually don't do a ton on my lower lash line. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of a bigger brush just to soften and then in my waterline i'm going to use this too faced pink uh, eyeliner i've been really enjoying this it's funny because i actually don't like the formula of these eyeliners in every other shade i think because i usually would use an eyeliner to like smudge out so i find them to be hard to work with but in the waterline and this actual shade, I have really been liking it. I'm also gonna try to use the iridescent color in here on my inner corner. It's quite flaky, which is pretty standard for these sort of like iridescent colors. And then I'm just gonna go back in with a mixture of that deep shade and the purple. And I'm gonna smoke this lower. Okay, so even though we have a lot going on, I wanna try to use the highlighter or glowy shade in this one size blush, maybe as a highlighter or a topper. So I'm gonna go into this pan right here. So I wanna see how this works. Ooh. Definitely gives you a really glowy look. I would not put this all over, like as a blush or as a highlight. It's sort of a topper. Okay, I'm also going to just wipe away that powder. I'm just gonna kind of press it in. All right, so to finish the face, we have lips, and I have a couple products to try out. So Too Faced has their new Lip Injection Extreme Lip Shape. So these are plumping lip liners. Cheryl tried these yesterday, and she told me that they're quite painful. So I can't wait, because I love when things really are painful. They have a click-up pen, and then they have a pretty interesting round applicator. So this is Puffy Nude which is kind of a, I would say, cooler tone nude. And then we have this color, which is In Big Truffle. I think I'm probably gonna go in with the first one. Yeah, this is a little bit deep, but you know I love these type of shades. It feels very creamy, almost too creamy. So I'm going to line my lips. I am scared, I'm scared, just because she said it hurt, like it was like intense. And I'm like, that's not my style. So I'm turning it on its side. It has like a fruity scent. This is definitely a cool tone shade. I don't know if this is gonna give me enough of like a lip line 
just because this formula is very slippy like it feels very much which makes sense like it would be something that you would want to fill your entire lip in which again makes sense if you're trying to get plumping okay so this is what the puffy nude looks like it's very cool toned on the lips and it's a little bit light for my foundation uh it's burning i can feel it took about a minute but I wouldn't say that it's like unbearable, but it definitely is prickling and burning and because I do overline because of the shape of my lips, I can definitely feel it. It's not, you know, something I would reach for unless I really wanted my lips to be plumped up. But I'm going to grab another lip liner just to kind of perfect this and then we're going to go in with our lipstick and lip gloss. Okay, so it's been about five minutes and my lips are on fire. So I would say those are not for the faint of heart, but I thought of a perfect lipstick to go with this. This is the Hourglass Unlocked in the shade Tide. I love this shade. It's my favorite of the entire range. I just felt like it would go really well with that liner. This shade is really, really light, especially with that lip liner. But we're going to go in next with gloss. I hope this works out. If I have to add something, I will. So Lawless came out with two new shades that are limited edition of their plumping lip glosses. So we have the color Violet Bloom, which I'm most excited about, and then Lavender Sorbet. So this is Lavender Sorbet, which is definitely like a milky lavender color. It's it's not very intense and this is the one I want to try out which is called Violet Bloom much more pigmented so I'm gonna go ahead and go in with this shade Ooh, my lips are burning so one thing I'm noticing once you apply the lip liner every time you touch it with another product like if you're adjusting your lip liner or applying your lipstick Anytime you touch it, it literally makes my eyes water because it's like pushing whatever is in there to make it burn into your skin. Oh, I am like honestly on fire right now. Those are not going to be for those of you that can't do the painful because like my eyes are watering every time I touch my lips. All right guys, so here's my finished makeup look, trying out a bunch of new products. So let's start out with this lip liner stain or tattoo. I think this is a good option if you want a base and you wear minimal makeup. This definitely did stain. I feel like I would have to play around more with how to get it to peel off in one go. It did look a little bit like I was eating chocolate or something at first because I was trying to wipe it off and my skin was getting a little bit red. So I'll keep testing this out, but I think for the price point, it's something worth trying. Now this, I don't think is worth it, the Ulla Henriksen. As I said before, I just don't think that it does much. It gives you a little bit of like a brightening sort of radiance. It does doesn't give you any coverage and really hydration wise I just don't think that it does that much either for the price I would not recommend now I do like this Stila lip marker I think that it does what it's supposed to do which is stain the lips and I always use a lip stain for the price I wish I would have gotten a shade that was a little bit more vibrant it's one of those things that I probably should have gone in store for but I do like that it has this interesting applicator so you could really line your lips and then fill them in so I don't think it's a bad product I just wish I would have gotten a better shade and I do like this NYX fat lip oil I do still prefer I think the Clarins there's something about the Clarins that I really liked like immediately off the bat but this smells really really yummy it has a nice pigment to it it has a really large doe foot I would say it's a little bit thicker in texture than the Clarins and I just think again the shade is not as bright as I wanted but I do like that these are actually pigmented so I think this is a really good option especially for a more affordable cost. Moving on to the Lawless palette. So I had heard actually from one of you guys that this was like the worst palette you've ever tried in your life. And when I was swatching it, I thought that it may be a little bit dusty, hard to work with. And honestly, when I used it on the eyes, I've used it like three times now, I haven't had an issue. I was a little worried today trying to do something a little bit more dramatic, but I do think that it performed just fine. I don't think that the shimmers are incredibly metallic 
metallic. They're more of like a satin finish. This one's definitely powdery, but I just used it on my inner corner. You can wet your brush to really make it pop. And the mattes in here blend just fine for me. I would say you definitely want to use an unset base just so they have something to grab onto. So while I don't think that these are the easiest shadows to work with or the best formula in terms of eyeshadow that I've ever tried, I really didn't struggle with it at all. I just think it's a light sort of dusting of lavender. Now when it comes to this new one size primer, I don't know how I feel. I don't think that my skin looks textured, but I definitely don't notice any pore blurring. Now this is supposed to be waterproof, sweat proof, but I felt like this is something that you would probably wanna use just in your really oily, sweaty areas. So I'm gonna leave a pinned comment after I've worn this for like five or six hours and let you know if I feel like this controlled my oil. So I don't know, it's one of those things that I feel like may be good for like targeted areas but in terms of like all over, I'm not sold yet. My thoughts on the Glowish by Huda Beauty Bright Light Sheer Concealer is I definitely think it is sheer to light coverage. It does have a lot of radiance, which doesn't surprise me because the tinted moisturizer had a ton. I don't think it looks bad on the under eye. It does brighten up, but I will say that if you have darkness and you need something to really cover, I would go in with a corrector first. This is definitely a no makeup makeup, more natural type of vibe, but I just think it's not enough coverage for me personally without putting something underneath, but I do think that it brightens and really gives a nice radiance. I do also really like the Half Magic blushes. I think the formula is really easy to use. It doesn't feel dry, but it's also not a full cream. Because it has that putty texture, it's very easy to work into a brush and apply over powder, and it does give a nice glow. These are more of a natural natural sort of blush, just something that really gives your cheeks radiance without enhancing your texture or making it look glittery. So I really like these. They have, I think, like six or seven shades, but I think these are really beautiful if you want just a radiance for every day. You could even swipe these on your eyes, and you want something that isn't like dry, powdery, but not quite a cream. Unfortunately, I just don't think I'm a fan of the Too Faced Lip Injection Lip Liners. When they say extreme, they are not joking. My lips are still burning and it's been like 20 minutes. It's something that I find uncomfortable. Now I do understand that if you don't have lip filler or you just want your lips to appear larger, I think this would be an option for you. For me personally, it is stinging and it hurts. Like every time I touch my lips with something else, it just pushes that into my skin and it really does burn. So I don't think there's anything wrong with this other than it hurts and I don't like that and I do find it to be pretty slippy so I think it is one of those products that they really do mean for you to line your lips but then also fill in I felt like I had a hard time getting precision just lining but I think because of the applicator and the nature of the product it really is meant to fill in and give you that plumping but I'm telling you right now it is a painful experience so just keep that in mind and then I love the lawless glosses this is nothing new I really think that this shade is beautiful. It's something different, quite pigmented, but when it's on the lips, it really does sheer out, so I don't find it to be like unwearable, but this formula is one of my favorites, and I actually love that they made this shade more pigmented. I would like to see their glosses moving forward have more pigment like this one. Okay guys, so I think that's everything for this trying new makeup. Hopefully the next time you see me, it'll be a favorites and fails, and also a roundup, and we'll get a little break from all the new launches, but I did want to test out these products because some of these literally just dropped or they haven't even become available yet. So let me know your thoughts down below about the products I used today. Let me know if you've tried any of these and what your experience was. I will link everything that I showed today down below in my description box. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.